Mr. Ryan King, who last week got to sit down and spend a good 15 minutes or so with Schmidt Peterson's latest stand in for the last two rounds of the season. So here is a, a nice little sit down of Ryan King and Jack Harvey. You've proven that you can, like you can drive well in the lights car because I remember in your first season in lights you actually won both races at Sonoma. Yeah, yeah, that was a good weekend for sure. I mean, I uh, I've actually never been to the Glen before, so I know that could be a uh, a tough one. But I know the historical um, value of of Watkins Glen, you know, and what that means to the motorsport community, not just in North America but in, to the whole world, actually. So. I'm really I'm excited to be there. It's a, uh, it's a bucket list track, but I can't deny that, you know, Sonoma is a track that in the past I've well, only won at, really, because I've only done the two races there in the Indy Lights car and uh, won, <laughs> won both of them. So I guess it would be nice to keep that going, but obviously that's not the expectation. And, uh, I don't, I, you know, Sonoma was also my first Indy car test. I was the quickest of the rookies that day. So I think, you know, the, the opportunity of racing... At the Glen on, uh, you know, as my debut road course race is uh, it's pretty amazing. I don't think too many people get to uh, to do that. And then obviously finishing the season off at Sonoma, uh, to be fair, this year is going to have been great. The three races that I'll have done will be the 101st winning of the Indy 500, Watkins Glen and Sonoma. I think uh, I think a lot of people would, you know, chop their uh, chop their arm off to try and be in that seat. So you know, I definitely feel lucky. I know we worked hard for these opportunities but um you know i know the team had a couple of driver options that they you know were considering and they chose to go with me so uh, you know i try and give them as good a result as possible to say thank you yeah like i i mean i'm i'm from new york i'm from new york city and watkins Glen is pretty much like my home indycar track unfortunately mm. i won't be able to be there this year but yeah like if if to me, if there's any other race to win besides a 500, it's probably Watkins Glen. Like I would, I would kill to drive an Indy car at Watkins Glen. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the Glen was a track that I knew even before I came to North America. You know, I, I, I do know, you know, what amazing history is there. You know, from from when Formula One even raced there and, and more. So, yeah, I think honestly, the, to be making the, you know my road course debut at Watkins Glen is. <laughs> It's amazing, really. I haven't quite got the words to explain how cool that is. You know, the thing is, when you start thinking about it more and more, you're like, actually, this is this is really cool. Then you start thinking about it, you're like, oh my god, this is like beyond cool, really. So yeah, this uh, is like childhood dreams. Oh like, yeah, cool. this is great. Yeah. So and the thing is, like, I know like, certain places we go to, they really do have like an amazing motorsporting community, and uh, Watkins Glen is one of them. You know, so. I know everybody there really embraces the race. I know it was great to be back last year. Uh, obviously great to be there this year. And, you know, hopefully it's one, you know, that just stays on the calendar from here on out. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like, it's it's kind of strange to even be thinking about, you know, having a part-time IndyCar schedule where you, it's like months between races. Is there like, besides like the massive effort to get, you know, the funding together, to get a ride together, how do you stay sharp, like, try to feel sharp behind the wheel when you get back in the car yeah i mean it's tough honestly you know, like i would definitely say to everybody uh it is that's a tough part of what you know a part season program especially you know a very part season program like we have um i the guys at Schmidt have been working hard to try and get me on a uh on a simulator and just stuff like that but honestly i've just been trying to stay as sharp as i can in the gym uh you know keeping working on all my reaction times and whatnot and you know i've, learned, I've watched a bunch of onboard footage and video already so i think uh i think you're as prepared as i can be without being in the car and experiencing all these things and actually feeling it for myself but uh, i mean that definitely is a challenge and one that's uh, hoping that we can overcome quite quickly in, uh, in an ideal world yeah like it, it can't be easy at all and like it, it must be great to have you know a teammate ex as experienced as James Hinchcliffe out there, mm -hmm. just, you know, someone to get feedback off yeah. of. Oh, yeah, James is a great guy, actually. James, I think the other day when we were talking about it is, when I first moved to Indy, James was one of the very few, I say very few, a lot of people did, but James was very nice to me from the first time I moved here, you know, from the very first time I met him. So yeah. to be able to come and, you know, try and contribute the team uh 
that, you know, as good a way as I can, you know, and help him in, in any way I can, you know, to get a good result for, you know, for the team, for him. Uh, you know, I do recognise that these are just single events for me. Uh, you know, it's not really going to change too much that we have planned for next year. But, uh, you know, I want him and the team to finish as high up as possible. And, you know, James is uh, he's like a great combination of his, uh, you know, terrific driver. He's a really great person. Um, you know, he's exactly the kind of teammate you want, really. So, uh, yeah, I definitely felt lucky to be, uh, to be sharing the, the engineering office with him, that is for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, even though these are one-off races, they can, you know, there's definitely, you know, a way that these races can help you in the future. Like, mm. like, is there anything that you're thinking about, you know, for next year, maybe, like, something else down the line that this can maybe build sure. up to? Yeah, I mean, we're very hopeful that, you know, these, uh, if we do a good job in these set of races, it's, uh, you know, it may lead to something a little bit more uh, next year, whether it's with, uh, with our sponsors or the teams or just showing teams of what I can do. You know, really, uh, you know, I remember uh, Connor Daly before he got his first season at Coin, ended up doing a similar kind of program where he jumped in the car when James was uh, was injured. Um, you know, and I think I do believe that led to his coin fee. So, I mean, we're taking these races very seriously. Um, you know, that it could be, you know, hopefully the, the you know, hopefully when we look back at it in a few years, go, oh, that they were the that was the re kickstart to getting in the car full time. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, we, we, you know, for as much as I, you know, kind of jovial sometimes and whatnot, I, you know, I like to have a good time. But, you know, we take these, you know, very seriously. You know, every race is an opportunity to yeah. try and show people what I can do and, you know, why I'm a, you know, good person to try and put in the car. And, you know, like I said to uh, Sam and Rick and already, that basically that I wanted to do such a good job where they're like, oh, we really need to get this kid in the car and actually almost create a headache for people to try and figure out where to put me. So, um, <laughs> you know, the thing is, like, I know I know it's going to be tough. You know, I, I'm under no uh, disillusions there. It's going to be incredibly hard. But, you know, I believe in myself. Uh, you know, I believe in the team, and I know they believe in me. So hopefully that combination there can uh, get a couple of good results. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, like, uh, <laughs> Like, Smith peterson has already shown this year that they're capable of getting those good results, so hopefully sure. that, you know, you being back with this team could to lead to, you know, great results, because I know, uh, unfortunately, he's no longer with the team of Kyle Lotion. He's done great on this car with the, on the road courses. Sure. So, it, it's, I would say, on paper, it, it seems like you should be out for for a good weekend. You just need to put the work in. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's just that I think you're, you're right. I mean, you know, we know the team is good. We know the car is good. That's why we wanted to uh, try and be the one driving it, uh, honestly. Um, <laughs> you know, I know, I think the Glen will be, the Glen, I think, will be tough. Uh, you know, it'll be my first road course race in an Indy car. Uh, you know, it's a physical circuit. But, um, yeah, honestly, I still don't see any reason why we can't achieve a good result. Now, we can, we can debate what we all think a good result is. Uh, another time, but um, yeah. you know, I, I believe I do believe in the team. I know what a quick car they've got this year. You know, they've shown it with with James, with Mikhail. Um, you know, just want to be the person to keep contributing to that. Yeah, like it's it's definitely something to look forward to. But slightly looking back, how was it? to, you know, step into, you know, the Entretties with, you know, in a partnership with Michael Shank Racing, but mm. in that six-car lineup at Indianapolis, it must have been, it must have been experience, especially for your first Indianapolis 500. Oh, wow, yeah, I mean, what was it ever? Um, so initially, my deal was just with, uh, with Andretti, but then as Fernando came over, they, uh, they brought in Michael Shank, and I love Michael, he's such a great guy, I mean, I was happy to... Uh, <laughs> you know, to partner with him. And then I remember there was one day I was in the engineering office and just kind of like looked across and uh, the Takuma hadn't won it at the time. I was yeah. sat next to, like literally next to two-time Formula One world champion, this guy who was my childhood hero, you know, Fernando Alonso, literally just like asking me how my car felt. And I'm like, <laughs> well, you know, this is kind of what it felt like. What did you think? And then I'm sat across from... Uh, Alexander Rossi, who just won the Indy 500, Ryan Anto Ray, who's a series champion, and he's won the 500. Uh, Marco, who's come about as close to winning it 
Razan as you can get, and then Takuma. And I mean, it was just just amazing, mate. Honestly, you know, it was just a, uh, it just really, really was a amazing experience because the amount of people in that room, they're the guys that, you know, the success that they've had and the careers that they have had already is what I'm working for. Um, yeah. You know, and to be there, to be able to, you know, speak with uh, Michael Andretti and Mario and, and, and everybody there, it was a great experience. I, I mean, I think it, it is fair to say it didn't exactly play out the way we hoped um, for, you know, for numerous reasons. But, you know, we had a good race going. We were moving through the field where we kind of hoped we might and could be. Um, you know, I can't avoid all the debris on track and it was just a yeah. shame, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, kind of crashed and I hit a big piece of uh, the debris, it cut the tire and I spun and it took me out of the race. And, you know, initially we had spoken yeah, I mean... with Andretti at trying to do Sonoma, but the thing is I look at all these things and, you know, based off of the 500, we were able to get in the car for Glen and Sonoma and then hopefully off of those races, we can try and do more next year. And, you know, we're not people to like bury my head in the sand, you know, we know what, this industry is and you know how it can be uh, hard at times and cool at times but you know you can also reap high rewards at times and you know we're just we're just here working as hard as we can to try and be on the grid you know simply um we try and make the most of every opportunity um and just go from there yeah like that's like that's a fantastic mindset to have especially you know when things out of control out of your control can happen and you know this is a great experience for hopefully upcoming 500s where you have all this, you know, knowledge to build off sure. of. Well, yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, a few people called me and were like, oh, man, I feel so bad for you. And I was like, okay. I was like, you know, no, do it for like a day. I was like, well, come tomorrow. I was like, don't feel bad for me. I was like, I was one of 33 people who started the Indy 500. I was like, yes. <laughs> you know, let, like, I said to people, I was good with the result. And then I kind of thought, well, actually... Nothing really to be too disappointed about. Obviously, I'm a competitive person. I'm here to try and win and get as good a result as possible. However, there wasn't. There was only 33 guys who got the opportunity to start and see the green flag of that race, and I was one of them. And you know, we're not. I don't bury my head in the sand and think, "Poor me, poor me." You know, I'm just here trying to work hard and try and show people what I can do, and hopefully, it leads to a more full-time drive. You know, and that's that's all we. It's all we can do. It's all we're trying to do, and all we're hoping to do. Yeah, and, like, it's, you know, thousands and thousands of people are, you know, out there hoping to be in that 33, and you made it, and that's definitely something to be proud of. Oh, and, that's but I would say, mega. Like, <laughs> Yeah, oh, I, I would say, I think I have time for one last question. Like, I would say, if, if there's anything that you could hope for in these last two rounds of this weekend, what, what do you hope for it to happen, whether on the track or off the track? Uh, one of my funniest memories from Indy was I was just getting changed. I kind of like side bump hipped Fernando. That was kind of funny. That was a surreal moment. Yeah. Um, I don't know, honestly. I mean, I think I would like to try and get a couple of top tens. I think that would be a good, uh, a good achievement for the last few races. Um, yeah, mate, honestly, I, I don't know, I guess really. I, we, we'll, <laughs> we'll see how it, we'll see how it plays out. I mean, just before Indy, I had this whole, image in my head how I hoped it would go and I think what I learned from it is just kind of take what comes at you and try and deal with it the best we can so I don't know kind of I'd like to get some uh, obviously good results on track I'd like to see James do something funny in the trailer it might be one that I can keep over, like, over him for a few years or two but uh, maybe I'll just try and get some dance lessons I don't know we'll, I'll, I'll just figure it out when the moment comes yes yes well have a great, have a great weekend in Watkins Glen. Thank you. Have a great weekend in Sonoma. Like, I really hope you do well. I know my co-hosts out there are pulling for you too. Thank you. Like, good luck, good luck, Jack. Perfect. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. Special thanks to Jack Harvey for being so gracious with his time, and I want to say a big thanks to Veronica at SPM for running their media department, who was so patient with me <laughs> getting that interview set up. She did the Lord's work. So, big thanks to Veronica over there at SPM as well.